Well, hello there. Welcome to this video where I will be talking about the tier list of terminal skills, right? That my friend, Mouth the Duke, was able to come up with in this video right here. If you would like to check out his video of where he explains which skills are better than others, feel free to check it out. And I'm sure that you will enjoy. All right, now that's out of the way. I will provide you with the proper list of what the actual things that are useful for you. Being a new player, being an experienced player, and being able to get what could work for your build right all right let's start with the reason why i will be picking up these skills right okay so you pick the skills because you are able to get the skill points for this right you pick the skills because you're able to fit it in your build this means that you're able to come up with a build that you are able to do it before you are overpowered these skills are very important for you to be able to get to the end of the game like if you're gonna be getting a skill after the game is already done like when you already killed every single person that is not really important so getting a skill at that point is not gonna be that much of a power up right for you okay so with that in mind let's start with the skills and decide which ones are really good for our playthrough before the end game we'll also be discussing mass of mode skills of course while at this all right being able to have short circuit allows you to have gas canisters for free it allows you to get small keys ornamental lantern and gasoline canister to complete puzzles because you can actually use gasoline canisters on generators to open doors as well as to make any kind of traps or weapons as a vela right you can also uh, find a lot of things that are kind of useless there but the short circuit places have a lot of ammo most of the time or something that will allow you to continue playing and strengthen your playthrough from bullets to i'd say even lucky coins right you're able to power through a very early part of the game but also if you end up rescuing avela instead of henrik short circuit allows you to continue playing the game without having to sleep since you only require one small key to get through the sewers to get to the streets of Rehevo, right? So short circuit is an S tier. You're able to play through the game in a different route and you're able to have more choices. The more choices you have in a playthrough, the better it is. This choice is also very important in muscle mode since you want to be able to explore the whole map before you power up at the Hexen. This skill allows you to craft traps and place them on the floor, being booby traps or bear traps. Bear traps are self-explanatory. You remove the legs and then you're gonna go for the head. Against some enemies, the legs don't really matter. Like for example, the bobbies. However, most enemies are cut off and they can interact. Like for example, you can also use it to kill death mask as well as needles freely, right? Booby trap allow you to go through a fight. And if you have pep pills or if you have an extra turn, you can have two turns before the enemy. Of course, booby traps can be used to stop enemies and stun them. And then you shoot them with a shotgun, causing them to instantly die. I have to say that is a good skill to take. If you would like to have it, you might as well do. You can save a lot of ammo. If you have a shotgun and you have a trap craft, you can play a trapper character where you can just one shot people easily because you will be mostly relying on short circuit to get the trap part materials. We have weapon craft. This easily goes into S tier. Now let me explain to you why. The reason why weapon craft goes into S tier is because of the fact that you can make these beauties. This one applies bleeding. This one applies poison. This one applies fire and the last one I believe was nerfed but it used to apply bleed. I hope it still does to be honest. The strongest one of this is of course the chainsaw being one of the strongest weapons in the whole game. I even made a speedrun with it showcasing how strong it is next to the of course as strong as over as strong as ever the wrench toss. One of the things about Termina that is one of the strongest things, like the most broken thing ever, is to be able to apply a status effect. Enemies usually have, most of the time, have no resistances against status effects, and bleeding destroys an enemy. Being able to have a whole team with just status effects allows you to power through any fight easily. Range Toss, another one, being a really good weapon. Why is Range Toss amazing? The video show shows how if you guard and then you rev up once, then you Range Toss, you can kill any participant except for Henrik in the torso. As long as you have one red point, you can always one-shot every single enemy at the start of the game, being able to just deal with them so easily without even having to worry about anything. Even then, most enemies at the start of the game don't have 500 HP, that's only the contestants. So against contestants, you would have to rev up once, then rest us. But against, for example, a Moonscorch enemy, a villager, right? You usually can just one shot them with Restos because it has a huge amount of base damage, being 300 damage. Blood Sword, 
sadly for bloodsword it requires a lot of preparation for it to work it's a good weapon but it needs more to be able to be used properly the reason why i put bloodsword on d is because there's so many things that you can spice if you ever use spice forge you can spice for so many things that are much stronger of course if you only have this as your choice it's a good choice if you are a new player and you got this as a spice forge go ahead and use it like it's gonna be a steal for you because when you spice forge stuff it gives you one red point however be very careful because some enemies go into their second turn and usually their second turn involves something worrisome for example the elite bremen soldier shields up and increases their defense completely however august goes for a coin toss right away as soon as you spice forge or the last one being the sylvian trooper summons the platoon early so you should always be careful with that or when you spice for things okay so about blood loss this one is hard because i've used it as an experienced player and the thing about this is that you lose a turn to attack on the next turn right now this can be used decently but you usually don't have enough time to prep for two turns where you will be attacking non-stop and not being able to be hit back because if you get hit back while having bloodlust you have no way of healing yourself so if you're a solo player you're gonna have a hard time with this and if you lack the team comp to be able to keep that bloodlust character fighting it might as well be attacking because increasing your damage next turns makes it so that it's only efficient if you get a critical or if you go ahead and kill that enemy in the third turn when your blood loss finishes not to mention you cannot rev up while doing this so increasing your damage you can already do it with rev so this is a skill that could work if it only didn't target random enemy body parts as well as if it didn't lock your character into a specific normal attack i'd say you can put this in b tier devour for a new player, this skill would be very useful since they might be running out of food. However, that will only be in Fear Hunger 1 because in Termina, you are able to find a lot of food throughout the game since the loot of pinecone, stick dirt, and many more that are useless have been removed from the pool. So you are more than likely sure to find a meat pie than anything. So this skill is that useful. Sisu could be a good skill. It could be an interesting skill. However, if you would want a plan for a skill that allows you to survive with one hp then in my opinion you are building your party wrong and having the thought that you will be killed at any point being able to plan for a fight to go right and knowing what the enemy does allows you to not have that hard and hard or sisu in itself you can play without those items even platoon i even made a guide on how to deal with platoon without hard and hard if you don't want to use it but the best thing is that this skill is situational if you would like playing while knowing that you cannot die, this is a helpful skill. So I had to say skill that you can use when you want for new players or experienced players. So you can have fun with this. You don't need hard and hard. You don't need Sisu if you're playing this game. The other items allow you to make builds that are very strong. Be it Battlestone, be it small things amulet being a soul stone being smoking from a pipe anything allows you to make a build and with the 99 shielding you're very much throwing the build choices for survival which is fine but it's not needed if you know what the enemy does warcry is pretty much pheromones so if you would like to use pheromones and warcry being on any kind of playthrough that you want having a specific character targeted by pheromones or warcry so that you can focus on characters not having to be that tanky when you know an enemy doesn't have any AOE attacks it's a really good idea you can just go ahead and take this and you can just break the game easily in fact I could even go ahead and put in an S tier because for new players these two are really good of course only take one for a morning a zombie or for a morning Caleb or even for a morning a tank or war crying a tank it's a very easy since the guard command allows you to survive so much because of how tanky you become so this is a really good skill I'd say you can spam it and the game will be a lot easier of course you need a speed for it for new players again for new players work in the promos amazing for experienced players as a possible skill to have would be based in this uh tier list based on experienced players however i will always tell you where for new players these things should go to right again this is for new players and this would be for experienced ones all right exploded is a good recipe you're gonna get it's a situational because you really have to go out of your way to kill karigura but if you're able to do it it is a pretty good ability to have pipe bombs they're really strong and i still have yet to try them in a full playthrough probably when Caligula releases or whenever i can i'll make a pipe bomb only run which could be fun to watch stay tuned intimidate 
moves such as persuasion persuasion and intimidate are really good skills for any player who wants to discover how the game works you're able to influence characters based on what you say to them some characters react in a way that will allow you to get a free turn and some characters will allow you to mess things around and to the point that you will be fucking things over they're decent i have to say they're not amazing but they're decent however persuade comes with this one that makes it an s tier diplomacy allows you to talk to an enemy as soon as the fight starts being able to just ignore the turn order which is something very important if you have diplomacy persuade becomes an s tier skill for any player being experienced or new players while intimidate cannot get diplomacy healing intent allows you to toy around with the spawn of the enemies you're able to move them away from just being in the area you need to know the aggro range though of how far away the enemy notices that you have that knowing where enemies are in Termina and Fear Hunger 1 will help you understand how to move around. With Killing Intent, you will be moving them away from where you know they're gonna be, and it messes with your brain. I'd say this is a C tier for new players and experienced players because you're not able to learn from the game and you completely remove the knowledge of where enemies are going to be. This is a very tricky skill to use. Only professional people that know where every enemy is gonna be should use this because you have to know you're much better just learning the route that enemies take. Forgot to mention, but diplomacy, persuade, are more than likely useful in Maso. As well as for intimidate, very useful for Maso. Well, I also forgot to mention that range toss is not as useful in Maso mode as it is in normal mode because you cannot have party members that will help you attack. But usually, you cannot kill people in Maso mode going for torso. You need to power through and be able to kill enemies or ignore enemies as much as you can if you don't kill them in the first turn you don't fight them master one unless you reach the hexen so you will not get in a fight with a rushes even marcos the old patch it doesn't work steal steal from marcos moon scorch form and get a heart and heart you can steal from the people that have guns you can steal ammo from them you can steal from the priest you can get a soul stone you can steal from the heartless one and get a yagetsu there's a lot of stuff you can steal in this game you should probably check a list on it because it's very very useful analyze there's enemies that are not affected by analyze knowing which are the ones that are affected and which one and which ones are the ones who are weak to it will allow you to be able to counter them and power through however it takes one turn for it to work usually enemies are dead after a turn you can of course also have a lot of speed speed up a character that has analyze analyze with them and then have another guy to attack the head and right again right away go for a one shot this for new players is a v because you wouldn't know about speed as a new player however for a player that knows how to play the game this is an a because at some point there are enemies that are really hard to deal with and you don't have to fight them at all but if you have an analyze but if you have analyze, you're able to kill them instead of running away from them. But as an experienced player, you don't want to fight enemies that you know they're going to have a hard time. So in that case, we leave analyze in optional, right? <clears throat> Let's change the list a little bit into no, optional, great, OP. This sounds like a better list, to be honest. Magna Medical for a new player will save their ass. Being able to use Magna Medical to remove Levi's heroin addiction as well as being able to revive a ally when they made a mistake it's a very useful thing especially since if you have magna medical and you have arm guards or a salmon snake you can choose to not lose that arm that you're giving for your ally or leg if you have salmon snake so you can totally remove mistakes now this for an experienced player it's an optional skill all right so we have these two combination skills <clears throat> medicinal and organ harvest being able to remove organs from enemies makes it so that you can actually heal blindness, heal broken bones, heal poison, and heal almost every single status that you get inflicted. This, for a new player, it's very, very strong. Very, very strong. Being able to suit yourself against mistakes, which is something that a new player does all the time when starting because they're learning the game. It's very, very strong. Especially because there's a lot of enemies in the game that can blind you and you will lose for an experienced player medicinal and organ harvest if you know what you're doing i would say this is an optional skill yet again you don't get yourself into positions where you would need to get something that would remove blindness if you're playing correctly same for master mode i would say optional precision chance 
No, missing doesn't happen often. And when it does, you usually go in for a limb that has a lot of dodge and could be nice if Analyze didn't exist. But Precision Stance is a lower version of Analyze. While Precision Stance uses no mine at all, but Analyze does, Precision Stance just gives you a chance to hit it. While Analyze makes it so that you will hit the head. Diagnosis is a fun optional skill for new players and experienced ones. It's fun if you want to see more lore about the characters and what they're weak against in a way. It's not really that important. You can have fun with it. Flesh puppetry. Here's a gamble, right? Flesh puppetry stacks with physical damage. So the damage scales with your physical attack, but you can only have four arms floating in the air. It caps at that point and you're not able to add more damage to it. If you find four arms in your playthrough, or if you saw four arms and you have four arms in your inventory, you're able to use this. However, the time that it takes to activate to the point that it actually comes out and knowing that it's a multi-hit attack, attacking whatever spot that it goes for, knowing that there's a lot of stuff that you can do with your turns, this is an optional. Be a new player or experienced ones, optional. Master of Vermin. For new players, this skill will get you stuff for free, and that's always great. Considering that the best thing that you can pray to, the best statue, is God of Fear and Hunger, because Almir doesn't really give you anything worth it. Another good skill, another reason why Mastery of Revenue is good is because you can get a small thing's amulet, which usually is 50 shillings, but you can get it for free if you look up a guide on how to do it. Mystery of Rat. It's an overpowered skill as well. Being new players or experienced players. Being able to stand every single part, being able to stand every single body part of the enemy allows you to power through every single fight and be able to just destroy any enemy that you come across. Not to mention you can spice it so you can do it twice or you can do it as a fight or you can even spice it so that it costs less mana. Rot this skill allows you to destroy the HP of almost every enemy in the game. That is a really good thing. However, for new players that don't know what enemy has what HP, I'd say this is an optional skill for them because they don't know what to use it on. However, if you're using a guide on what is affected by rod, this skill high skyrockets into OP. Now we have almost all the mage stuff here. Let me go one by one with them. Two of the strongest skills you can put spice in the game appear right here, as well as one that falls up being a different use, however still strong. Black Orb is able to put up massive amounts of damage. Having La Dance Macabre stacked fully, or having three Chak Chaks and one Death Mask, or even having one Death Mask and one Chak Chak, it outputs a massive amount of damage. You can kill Platoon in two turns with your Dance Macabre maxed out with one Chak Chak and one Death Mask. Not to mention that you can also headshot very easily. Same for this one. Black Smoke can easily headshot very very easily headshot an enemy into the game flag smoke allows you to just destroy almost every single enemy not to mention that it has a 10 mana use so you can just explode enemies heads in the first one if you spice white with it have a chance to just go in a fight they're gone Blood Golem allows you to have one rev up like the others, like Black Smoke, like Rod, if you wise watch it. However, you can have your summon, you can have an ally that does a lot of damage and can take a lot of damage as well. <clears throat> it's a very strong skill to have. All of these for new players and advanced players in the game as well as master players are just OP that you can use. Hoarding, an optional skill, could be nice to have. However, the mana use and needing to spice it in order to reduce the mana as well as make it useful really hurts the skill to the point of being an underwhelming skill than black orb and black orb can be gotten very easily if you're playing marina and you get all the guts and you get level 3 on grogorod or if you play osa and you get level 1 on grogorod and draw the other circles <clears throat> hoarding is not it's just an optional skill that you can use being a new player or an next player necromancy having mid shields that you can go ahead and like a 34 hormones and war cry them it's always gonna be a strong thing to have very very strong in fact i would say that is just the combination that you want necromancy war cry and pheromones right master chef if you're a physical attack character master chef is a must for yourself if you're a magic character you don't need it being a percentage damage that increase for physical attack characters it's a must for new players and for experienced players because you can get a percentage damage from the food buff, as well as the defense and evasion. Evasion will work same as Bab and Weave, being able to be a really good skill that you can just get, which is this one, Bab and Weave. Melee proficiency, no. Same as Precision Sense, you don't need it. Slow metabolism. If you are having trouble with food in the game, it means that you're not playing the game right. So new players and experienced players, 
are not gonna need this even if you are a new player that is struggling with food you will find food if you keep moving through the stage through the game trust you will not be out of food escape plan this skill could work and there's some people who enjoy using it however if you have two small things amulets equipped and you decide to run with the run command not the skill the run menu you can run away from every single enemy in the game except for needles and not not a single enemy can catch up to you if you run away with two small things amulets so this is for me for new players and for advanced players a no which kind of sucks because we have either killing intent or escape plan with mark having two of the bad skills here you cannot really do much about it right sure having more chances could be nice but this only works when you go skill escape and barely works from what i've tested lock picking same as short circuit being able to open places where you can go through without having to be locked helps you with early game a lot especially because there are places where only lock picking works and small keys don't work for example the source for a new player and an advanced player this is really good and allows you to continue playing the game without being stuck uh, executioner this skill doesn't work every single character in the game can two shot enemies with a shotgun and i've tested it with enemies that cannot one two shot enemies and i tested it with enemies that you cannot two shot with the shotgun and it still does not work for example <laughs> the meat grinder the mob's meat grinder the mob that has a chainsaw you cannot double shot it needles you cannot double shot it so this skill is not coded properly and probably in the future only levi will have the skill being able to one shot enemies in the other world with two shots two tapping them down into the ground it's very useful if this skill becomes available to only levi this is op but as of now it does not work here's another one that we are to the list you know exactly why gun proficiency is not good having more chances to hit an enemy in a percentage amount doesn't increase the headshot percent gunslinger allows you to remove limbs from an enemy being able to shoot the limbs of an enemy before an enemy even has a chance to do anything in the overworld we allow you to neutralize them completely the woodsman without two arms doesn't do anything and you can just toy with it if you fight them without gunslinger you're gonna have a hard time marksmanship it's a really situational skill this is if you like to gamble be a new player experienced player master player you like gambling this is a skill you want because it's gonna make you feel amazing you know to watch your enemies at rare times with a sniper shot it's gonna make you feel amazing it's a beautiful skill have because it depends if you enjoy luck in games or not most swarm no it doesn't have enough damage for it to be worth using it heals a good amount but the scaling is not that good and almost every single magic i'm gonna be putting into now cannot be spiced with spice forge it's very strong it's very very strong and almost every single magic <coughs> that can be spice has a different way to use it and will strengthen the ability by a lot if you spice it any ability that i put it here cannot be spice most of the time now we come into actually a skill that is both not spiceable but an op as fuck thing this thing here is called red arc this shit cannot be spice however the only reason why new players would want this and advanced players would want this is because it can one shot heads and it has a hundred percent chance to hit not to mention it can also stun limbs so if you have a death mask you can go ahead and wrench toss and then red arc and this will allow you to kill that thing easily without suffering any casualties because you can just wrench toss the arm and then red arc the other arm so they cannot move the only bad thing about red arc the only bad thing about most swarm is that they are new game plus skills you only get them when you finish the game and there's requirements to them look them up adrenaline rush is a very important skill for any physical attack character being able to increase your damage three times by a percentage is always great especially when you have all the buffs which are all the buffs engrave master chef war cry bloodlust i mean bloodlust and anything that will give you damage will allow you to power through with adrenaline rush even a heroin for example would make damage even higher very free proficiency no you don't need this you are going to be forced to take it but you don't need this it doesn't do anything proficiency skills don't do anything bubble and weave is a very strong skill for new players they might find this as a great skill not amazing but for players who know what's up bob and weave can easily guarantee that you will dodge 
Latoon's coin toss attack, for example. Bobbin Weave allows you to play in a way that you will just <clears throat> never get hit most of the time. And Bobbin Weave is the same as having Master Chef. Master Chef can give you the same benefit as Bobbin Weave, the same stat upgrade of evasion. But Bobbin Weave is free, and Master Chef, you gotta eat and craft from food. Counter Sense. Caster Sense is a great skill to have, but not amazing. There could be some times where you can use it, being a new player or advanced player, but most of the time you'll just rather have something else at the time, since you will be powering up in a different way, you usually require red points to do the maximum amount of damage. It's fine and it's great to have an attack that goes back and heals you with Lichmonger for free. However, as it is, you don't usually need this because of how strong your character will be, you don't need to go for this. And if you choose to go for this, it's a good skill to have. It's not overpowered at all, but it's good. Fast stance. Having to decide that you want to lose a turn to get stronger in the next turns is an optional thing that's even good for new players or advanced players. Because of having the option to have choose one thing similar or engraving God of Your Hunger to give you more speed, fast stance falls off in the end and usually it's not worth taking. You can use it if you want, but it's an optional skill that you should upgrade into. Perfect Guard allows my experience to work, to be able to block the limb loss that you can have that can happen. Perfect Guard does not work sadly against the Heartless one, so Perfect Guard will be something that will not be of use against the Heartless one at all, so you should be looking for limb protection by that. But having Weapon Craft and Perfect Guard allows my playthroughs with a physical character to work because you need both limbs to use a chainsaw. Perfect Guard will not do anything if you're a mage character, because you usually don't care about your legs or arms, since you're mostly using your mind to attack. So for a mage, Perfect Guard will just be an optional thing. While if you're going as a new player or extreme player, going physical attack, Perfect Guard will be nice to have. Advanced Occultism and Greater Occultism are really good things to have being early game, late game, new player, experienced player. Having one rev means that you can increase your damage and having three revs means that you can have your attack happen twice if you're a physical attack player or having two revs or one rev allows you to cast stronger spells at the beginning of the fight. Plus being able to have a white, spar white spice. Plus talking about Spice Forge, we should already add this here because we want the Spice Forge, Speed, Spice Forge, Rod Spice Forge, Black Orb, Spice Forge, Black Smoke, Spice Forge, Blood Golem. You're able to just have one extra red point easily with the White Spice Forge and having Advanced Occultism and Great Occultism gives you three red points at the start of the fight. This can be good for mages or physical attack characters. Remember to only use one red point if you're a mage and remember to use all the red points if you are a physical attack character because you usually get more from having one red point in each turn than having all of them right away. Engrave is a masterful skill. Engrave allows you to play in so many different ways that just destroy the game. Being able to increase your damage, being able to tank yourself, tank an ally that you're putting pheromones on, giving speed to your whole team so you can have an extra turn and don't worry about anything. Being able to always have the turn to go before the enemy. Everything here allows you to just destroy the game with Engrave. There is no reason to not take it, being a new player or experienced player. Warden Sigil, optional skill. The Warden Sigil allows you to put a, a marking on the floor that allows you to stop enemies <clears throat> from moving there. However, this marking goes away once you leave the screen, so this is not that useful. It can be optional for whatever it is that you want to be doing to juke the enemies. Because there's one thing in the game which you can do. If you move an enemy left and right, they usually lose energy and they stop following you. Making it so that you're able to just continue juking them without any problem at all. However, Instead of using War Sigil, I would recommend you to kill enemies in specific places so you can block areas so you can easily tra traverse them later. Advanced Botanism is a skill that is optional for new players and experienced players. Being able to use two blue herbs and one red one to heal 125 HP is cool. <clears throat> However, you're wasting your resources that way. Red herbs are very, very important to have. However, so are blue herbs and lavender and red herb gives you condensed lavender which heals 100 mana but it's very very difficult to find red herbs again and you're better off saving them for heals 
also red and green it really doesn't do much either it heals poison and it heals infections but you already have a lot already with the items that you can be getting you don't need this being new player or advanced player advanced potent item is just there it doesn't do much it's just there for you poison tip for a physical character or any character that attacks with a normal attack this is an op skill being able to put status effect i already told you is a really good thing so having weapon craft or poison tip allows you to just break through any kind of fight that you need to with just the status effect as long as the enemy is weak to it toxicology a very useful skill condensed hemlock allows you to destroy enemies that have a lot of hp you're able to kill them easily by just using one red herb which is very important and a hemlock condensed hemlock even though it needs a red herb to be able to destroy bosses with a very strong poison it's a very strong thing to do you just need to know which enemy is weak to poison for a new player toxicology if you have no knowledge of the enemies this is a no you don't take this for an advanced player or someone who's using a guide to know which enemy is weak to poison this is an op thing and there was again awareness strong for new players and advanced players you know to pick up the roots of the blue herbs on the floor and use them to for passive healing in a fight be it boss fight or any fight that you don't have to attack back for example an enemy that doesn't attack back and you can just card against being able to fully heal is very useful the death mode cover is one of the strongest things in the game even stronger than adrenaline rush i have to say that the dance mode cover goes hard on the percentage that you get from it stacking three times to the point of getting these numbers it's just very very strong be a new player or experienced players this thing is very useful great meditation doesn't work as of it is now in this patch it doesn't work great meditation does nothing however meditation it's a really good thing because it gives you two red points being able to guard and get two red points right away it helps mages as it helps physical attack characters being able to attack twice after each card allows you to just play with the card function until you can kill anything this is whatever to be honest remember that i am using this guy to put things here and every single one of these things <clears throat> it's just strong on its itself don't think that because i put poison tip here or weapon craft here and meditation here means that weapon craft is better than meditation no everything here up here is strong as heck and everything here i know is shitty as heck cholesterol it's just strolling because it's work very trauma you don't need the man the mind save if you're able to deal with the mind as a new player or as an experienced player you will notice that there's a lot of rooms where you can go to regain your mind and afk in, as well as many items in the game that you can loot or via as well from the shop that will allow you to replenish your mind easily so this is a no skill and it goes right next to slow metabolism of course again this doesn't mean anything to you i'm just moving them close to each other because i want to see them. <coughs> and guard does work the way that it is that i don't put it in troll right now is because this skill allows the enemy to take into a second turn most of the time while you take an attack they're already going into a second turn this usually fucks with new players as well as experienced players because of not being able to run doesn't really do much so it's kind of hard to go with this now we have also order charge order charge it's a really cool situational skill that you can use however you can always suit up a character to be more useful than just a machine that allows you to attack random body parts as your allies will be able to attack every single time that this guy uses order charge even himself will attack so it's a good skill but it's just optional to the point of it being a mess of skill it's great and all but it relies on a lot of rng because you will be targeting random body parts and its mana use is very expensive for what it does golden gates this skill this skill this skill golden gates it's a trap for new players it's a trap for experienced players and it's a trap for speedrunners even in muscle mode this doesn't really do much you're usually forced to go through levels to pick up specific items or activate generators using golden gates just makes stuff more difficult to figure out if you're able to come up with a route that uses golden gates in an efficient way this skill is optional if you're not able to come up with a route that uses a specific path that will allow you to get more efficient time being a speed run or anything i would say this is great but as of now every single speed run that i've seen with golden gates is a no so for advanced players no don't use this unless you know how to use it if you know and you are certain that you know how to use this this is a great one so this one will go here for now until i'm proven wrong luna meteorite doesn't do enough damage and same with luna storm uses a lot of mine it cannot be spiced so they're very useless to have mind read this is great if you want to get into the lore of the story you don't get anything more than lore so it's just an optional skill new players and advanced players can use it easily reveal aura it's also a good skill for new players and advanced players to guide themselves on the map it's just to be able to just know where you are and where you're going you can always just use it and then remove it from 
your list because you can go into a hex and save then reveal aura then load the game and see what's up so this is an optional skill that you can use easily let's make sure that you don't need it because you usually can reload a save to go back into having a source awesome. blood sacrifice being able to power up brokorot being one of the strongest gods in the game having black or black smoke blood golem it just breaks the game at times so having blood sacrifice is a really good skill as a new player and as a experienced player you can go for it easily however if you are not into the thought of having to fight a very strong enemy like samurai you can just ignore it and go into optional however if you know how to fight samurai or if you know where to find her or how to make it so that she doesn't fight back this is a really good skill to have same with masturbation and why is masturbation good it can do the same thing as blood sacrifice getting one point in grogoros each time you use it and with blood sacrifice you can heal right away after you use it to do it again and again masturbation can only be done once on sylvian circles why is this good because of healing whispers because of loving whispers being able to heal your whole team or being able to heal yourself it's gonna allow you to heal your whole heal your whole party together and keep them alive just at the cost of mine which you can just afk to get or be able to smoke and get mine away because health is very important in this game agility one very important very very important being able to have one small thing amulet and plus one agility allows you to have an extra turn against most enemies so this allows you to have one extra turn always in every single fight except for some specific ones like the rat king enemies and kaiser for example so you're able to power through most of these fights being able to guard when you have your turn and being able to attack only your extra turn allows you to be the tankiest being in the world especially if you combine it with perfect guard attacks of fun is an optional thing same with defense same with magic attack same with magic defense same with mind capacity why are these all there here if you go into a percentage phase magic attack plus one defense attack defense plus one magic attack plus one and magic defense plus one are really good if you're going for a specific tank builds like this two allow you to just tank yourself beyond recognition attack and magic attack allow you to power through beyond the limits especially as you get, you're gonna get a lot of magic attacks in the game and mind capacity is a good one if you're gonna be playing as a mage and you want to have extra mind so you don't have to worry about having to heal your mind in an extra turn it's an optional thing to have not amazing longinus gets the same treatment as blood sword except blood sword can actually be spice force but longinus same treatment as blood sword and that's it there's not much to it to be honest rain flower i mean if you're struggling with mine you might as well just get a pipe and just get some the back you'll be able to just get your mind back because if you want brain flower you don't need to same with hard flower just get loving whispers and be able to hear yourself or healing whispers and be able to hear your whole team why do you need this there's no need for this it's just there for you to heal yourself or hear your mana after some time from planting a flower into a corpse sure it could be optional but it's just not not at all chains of torment i tried this early it didn't do enough damage it cost 80 mana ignore this it's the only way though to apply bleeding if you're a mage so if you like bleeding just a very strong stat to have diva to have you could use it but the 80 magic but the 80 mana that it requires just destroys the skill combustion it's very good paramount trick so it's pretty good scorcher is why these are really good scorcher allows combustion and paramount trick to deal a lot of damage a lot of damage and saying a lot of damage see this a lot of damage while paramagetic will never be as good as combustion it's a really good skill to have to apply the stat being burning on an enemy and we said already that being able to burn an enemy poison enemy bleed an enemy allows you to just power through fights so paramagetic and combustion have really good uses photosynthesis and great photosynthesis go into the no list you don't want to play with this being able to only have your character outside and only by then they heal themselves eh right eh. it doesn't feel like they're that useful considering that you're using a soulstone for it you can just use three soulstones and get this and this right away blowing whispers and healing whispers go ahead and just get that ignore that the other one roots and rip this one is a really good skill however you need to have a really good stack of la dance macabre with magic attack or the other thing that works is having occultism and advanced occultism if you have this it will allow you to cast it in the first turn and destroy most enemies but at the same time if you want to go for this you might as well just go black smoke which kind of does the same with less damage but with less mana use as well as with the capacity capability the ability to blind enemies and spontaneous combustion here is here and spontaneous combustion goes right in the troll spot because it kills you well i hope you enjoyed this i'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think of this tier list i've never actually done a tier list like this and i would love to read your comments to see what you think about the build is there any skill that should be changed around or is there any skill that is not really op 
any kind of comment i will try to get back to and i will try to respond back just let you know what i think of it now if you want to go and do this tier list for yourself i'll leave the link in the description and make sure to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it all right thank you so much for this and i gotta say what a great tier list i have let me just download it holy shit